Good morning, everybody. MG here. MG Covers bringing you a brand new sports handicapping video. Title of this video is March Madness Preview for March the 17th, 2022. Super excited. We're going to give you all my lines, uh, thoughts on some of these games, maybe even a free play or a lean in a certain direction. Uh, before we do that, as always, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, greatly appreciate you subscribing to the channel. If you want to learn about sports betting, sports handicapping, you're at the right place. Uh, tell you all the pros and cons. And actually, just simply by following me, watching all my videos, you will improve your sports handicapping drastically. If you want to follow me on social media, MG Covers, cover spell with a Z. I give out a lot of content on my Instagram storyline, things I don't normally make a video. Sometimes I see line movement going in a certain direction. I'll post that. So again, get a lot of value simply by following me on social. MG Covers, cover spell with a Z on Twitter as well. All right. Hey guys, March Madness is here. Let's dive into it. Um, we're going to preview all of the games for today, show you my lines and some thoughts on the games. And I want a couple of disclosures because I think this is important. So if you look over here to the left, these are my lines uh, for all the games and of course the games here. Now, this is from my stat model. It's very important. A stat model, and let's define what a stat model is. A stat model is a statistically driven model with no bias factored in. So what does that mean? That, that means these lines over here are not the lines that I came up with personally. These are lines derived from a stat model. To be successful in sports handicapping, you have to have a stat model that is statistically driven because these lines over here from the books have biased factored into it. And what do we mean by a bias line? For example, Tampa Bay. Uh, Tom Brady's coming back. So if Tampa Bay played the New York Jets in week one, what would the line be? Who would be favored? Well, Tampa Bay would be favored, right? By how much? I don't know. Probably I would say that line would probably be minus seven and a half. Uh, you see what I mean? So there's no stats we don't have any current stats for them, but that's probably close to what the line would be. What, what is, how is that line derived? What is that line derived? How was, how do we come up with that? We come up with that line based on our bias. The public perceives Tampa Bay to be better than the Jets. So the line reflects that. So the purpose of having a line is to having an unbiased statistical model. Now, one of the challenges, we'll go ahead and bring this to the surface, when handicapping NCAA tournament is some of these teams haven't played or in completely different divisions, haven't played similar opponents. So some of these lines will quote, look very strange. And once we get to that point, I'll explain uh, why we don't ever uh, change the line. So let's dive into it. We'll start with Michigan, Mich uh, Colorado state again, Michigan, you know, on paper, uh, not really a great team, 17 and 14 on the year, playing a really good Colorado State team. And, and of course, if you're new to this, all these games are neutral. Uh, one quick tip, we'll dive back over here to uh, yesterday. If you're handicapping NIT, remember those are not neutral. In the NIT, these teams actually play at home. And if you watch any of my videos, you'll know that the home team wins 70% of the time in college basketball. So you do get a little bit of an edge there. Um, so just keep that in mind. All right, so let's go back to the tournament. Uh, Colorado State, we have Colorado State minus 15 and a half. Um, I would say that's a pretty good line. Um, my line uses stats from the last five games because the best indication of future performance is most recent performance. Year-to-date stats do you no good. So definitely a lean in the direction of Colorado State. Now, very interesting game here, South Dakota State and Providence. South Dakota State plus two, Providence minus seven. Public has been all over South Dakota State. In fact, I'm looking at now, depending on w where you look for um, to get your information, I'm the source that I use showing 59% of the tickets on South Dakota State. It's a very public team there. Um, you know, they're they're very good. They're 30 and four in a year. But again, like I've said before. This is uh, probably the best opponent South Dakota State has played all year. And for those of you, I'll make another parallel comparison. If you've ever wagered on horse racing or greyhound racing, this is a prime example. And what I mean by that, you have Providence played a really good schedule. You have South Dakota State has played, has not played the type of competition that Providence has played. So this is a step up in class. In fact, this will be the best team South Dakota State has played all year. 
So what you'll see in horse racing, you'll see a team, uh, a horse that's maybe a C class. If they win in C class, they get moved to B class. So then they have to perform against all of the B class. And what happens a lot of times the public will overvalue that horse moving up in class simply because they won, but that was against C competition. So now they're playing B competition and you have to factor that when you're, when you're looking at this. So considering you have the public all over South Dakota state, my line is Providence minus seven, definitely a lean in the direction of Providence there. Memphis, Boise State, basically a coin flip game, uh, real close. My line's very similar to books. We have Memphis minus three. Sports book is minus uh, three. And again, when you're capping NCAA tournaments, a very difficult, extremely difficult time to cap. It's much easier to cap during the the season than it is the tournament. Why is that? Well, you can see by my line. Memphis minus one. Sports book has Memphis minus three. Basically the same line, no value. Both teams are good you're going to get both teams are extremely motivated. This is the NCAA tournament winner goes home. So you'll get max performance or should from this team as well as this team. All right, moving on to Norfolk State and Baylor. Again, classic example where you have my line is minus seven. And some of you watching this video, oh, wow, you have, wow, that's, that's such a bad line. Norfolk State's minus seven. Um, Sportsbook's having 20, 20 plus 20 and a half. Again, understand this is from, their last five games, which they played, they didn't play any opponents similar to Baylor. So this is a very important point, especially those of you that are interested in building models or understanding this business. So this is the model, what my model says, minus seven. The sports book has plus 20 and a half. So if it looks odd, what do we change it to? Okay, think about that for a second. What do we change it to? Because if I change this line, let's say if I just make it, I just come up with an arbitrary number. I'm going to make it uh, five. Well, now I've brought my own bias into that line, right? Because th th we want to keep this model pure. So in a situation like this, majority of time, it's simply a pass because we never change the model. Because if I change the model, it's no longer 100% statistically driven. We're bringing our own bias into that line. So in a situation like this, we'll pass. And what you'll see the books will do is basically this. Um, you're going to have generally a pretty big spread. Moving along to the next one, same deal here. Long, uh, Longwood and Tennessee. We have Tennessee minus three. The actual line's minus 18. Again, probably the best team Longwood would play all year would be Tennessee. Now, we'll show you this. Um, Longwood's a pretty good team. And I am friends with one division one assistant coach and he's, he taught me this a, a long time ago. Let me see if we can use this example here. Yeah. It's a pr NC college basketball is a perimeter game. And a lot of people would argue the NBA is a perimeter game as well, which means um, it's all about shooters. If you don't have shooters, you can't win. So a lot of these s smaller teams, they realize all the bigs in college basketball um, there's not many of them. It's easier to find a perimeter shooter than it is to find a big. All the bigs go to Kansas, North Carolina, the big schools, no pun intended. So the success of these smaller schools depends on shooters. Now, interesting to note, look here. Uh, Longwood, the last five games, they've shot 46% from the field goal, from the floor. 50% from the three-point line. So today, if they get hot, and they shoot 46% from the field and 50% from the three-point, probably end up covering this game, okay? So, you know, you have that element. Again, the public will perceive, oh, wow, Long Wolves playing, you know, Tennessee. But, again, it's a perimeter game. I mean, Tennessee's bigger, stronger uh, than Long Longwood. But, again, if Longwood gets hot, you know, and you, you're going to see that in the tournament. Again, going back to the premise of this video, that's why it's difficult to handicap NCAA tournament. All right, Richmond, uh, Iowa, uh, you know, probably a step up in class slightly, but I mean, Richmond's played a pretty good schedule. I mean, they have some, you know, pretty good wins here. Dayton uh, beat them twice. VCU, uh, Rhode Island uh, lost to the Bonnies, uh, beat St. Louis, lost to uh, VCU there. So, I mean, obviously, Iowa's probably played a, a, a better schedule. Big win over Purdue there. Uh, but again, NCAA tournament, you never know what can happen. We have Richmond minus four. You're getting a lot of points there at 10.5, so definitely lean uh, in the direction of Richmond. 
Georgia State, Gonzaga, uh, same deal here. Gonzaga has pretty much blown out everybody. Um, they're always going to get a you know close to a 20-point spread. Every, everybody they play, maybe not for the next couple rounds, but definitely, um, obviously, they're going to win this game here. We have Georgia State minus three, same uh, concept as the Norfolk State game. So this will more than likely just be a pass here. Marquette, North Carolina, this is where the lines would probably be a little bit more accurate. We have uh, North Carolina minus eight, uh, North Carolina minus three and a half. And what I generally like to see when you hear me, if you follow me on Instagram, I'll say this game has value. I want to see at least somewhere close to a five-point differential. So in this case, we we're close to it, right? Four and a half point differential between my line and the sports book line. So definitely some value um, on the North Carolina side there. All right, New Mexico State's two and a half uh, playing uh, UConn. Uh, New Mexico State, pretty good team here. Let's go back and look at some of these. Uh, probably UConn would, you would give UConn the, the edge strength of schedule. Um, Lost to, uh, let's see. And I always check that just to make sure is when, you, when you're looking at these games, see if they have a similar opponent, see how well. If they have a similar opponent, you can, I mean, I don't put, you know, 100% stock into that, but it's generally a good indication, and that helps to sort of combine the teams uh, to give you a gauge of how they might perform. So uh, maybe a lean there, New Mexico State. Uh, but again, I think that is a step up in competition for, for them. So for me, if I was actually, if you made me play this game, I'd probably pass. Uh, St. Peter's, uh, Kentucky, same concept as those other big spreads. Uh, we have St. Peter's favored. So um, Sportsbook line plus 18 uh, probably would pass on this. And again, too, just like um, we've talked about, you saw this the other night in the NIT tournament with Texas A&M. They felt like they got snubbed from the tournament. Um, they did win, forgot who they were playing off the top of my head, but they were very sluggish to start. So motivation does come into play. You, you have to ask yourself how motivated would Kentucky be to play St. Peter's. They know they're probably going to win this game, so very difficult game to get up for, and that's why you have um, – I mean, it's possible, very possible these teams can cover uh, because they're extremely motivated. They have nothing to lose, Right. These 15 to 16 seeds are supposed to lose, right? Um, so they can play sort of free. All right, next game. So I would pass on that if it was me. Indiana, St. Mary's. We have this one at even, so not a lot of value there. Pretty good line with the books. They have St. Mary's favored minus 2.5. Indiana plus 2.5. Creighton, San Diego State, 8 and 9 seed there. So it feels like a coin flip game. We do have uh, Creighton favored in this one. Uh, so a little bit of value on the Creighton side there. Uh, Vermont, Arkansas, interesting matchup, in my opinion. Vermont's plus five, and I think a lot of people would have, would have anticipated this line being bigger than that. We have Vermont minus 11. Again, haven't played similar opponents, but I do want to show you this. Similar to that game I showed you previously, when you talk about a really good perimeter team, look at Vermont from the floor here. 50% in our last five games from the uh, field, and they shot 35%. From the three-point line again, same deal. Averaging 78 points a game, Arkansas averaging 73. Pretty good defense too over here for Vermont. Um, I don't know if I could slide that over to to, to show it now. So again, you know, if Vermont gets hot, um, I think that's a good line by the books there, right? Um, and they're anticipating this game to be a little bit close. Let's see what the public thinks. You always want to look at. I'm not doing it in this video, but you always want to see what the public is doing. And it doesn't matter what the sport is. You always want to look at, you know, where the public is leaning. In this particular game, um, the book I'm looking at now, we've got 60% of the tickets on Vermont. And that line's actually moved down from five to four and a half of uh, Vermont. So we have some line movement moving in the direction of Vermont. All right, uh, San Francisco, Murray State, another interesting matchup there. Uh, these teams, uh, you know, haven't played similar opponents. Uh, you can check that. I'm not going to for this one, but we have Murray State minus four. Uh, probably a pretty good line by the books. The books have them at minus two. They can definitely score points. Only lost two games all season, so that would be one I'd pass. Too tight. 
Uh, Akron, UCLA, we have Akron minus 5.5, Akron plus 13.5, UCLA minus 13.5. Now, this is an example of a team stepping up in class. This will be the best, the best opponent Akron has played all year. So sort of that shock of playing a, a better team. Um, I would actually, in this particular game, lean uh, in the direction of UCLA here, um, even though it's going against the power rankings, and I've already talked about that. Let me take a look at, let's see if I can get, see what the public's doing here. All right, so yeah, you got 80% of the public on Akron here, so definitely like to lean in the direction of UCLA fading the public. All right, Texas Southern and Kansas. Figure this to be a blowout. Again, it's a very similar situation we have. And so what you have to realize, all these teams are good relative to the opponents they play. They're in the tournament. And so, again, these stats that I use for Texas Southern are based on Texas Southern's last five opponents. Um, step up in class for uh, Texas Southern. So difficult to uh, cap there. Uh, Eastern Washington, Fresno State. Interesting game here. We have this one, uh, Fresno State minus 3.5. Um, the actual line is minus 13, and you would say, well, you got value at Eastern Washington. What I generally like to do with my power rankings, whoops, that's from a different, okay, this isn't the tournament. Okay, that's important to note, but we'll cap it since we're here, is if my line has Fresno State favored to win 3.5, Fresno State is minus 13.5, more than likely, uh, we can assume they're probably going to win. So I would say you split the difference. That line's going to be somewhere about, you know, minus six. So in these particular games, I generally don't like to look at East, Eastern Washington as having value. At least that's how I cap it because, again, if my team has them, if my line has that team favored, Sportsbook has them favored, more than likely they'll end up uh, winning that game or should more times than not. So anyway, just to sort of recap, uh, you can apply this concept Number one, um, if you see a 50-50 game like this particular game here, you know, more times than not, that would favor the dog. That means that doesn't mean they're going to win. It would just favor in terms of how you would approach the game. I mean, if it's a coin flip game, if you can flip a coin, that's going to favor the dog there. Um, if you play Boise State on the money line, you get plus 125. Um, that one's a little bit tight, though. Uh, so generally, I like to get a little bit more than that um, for a 50-50 game. Maybe if it was somewhere like, you know, plus 150 or even plus 200, you could double your money. Um, and then understand you'll have these games like here, like this one where you have teams stepping up in class. Um, I would say that would generally, for the most part, would favor the better team. Um, but then a lot of that depends on the spread, which makes it difficult. And then finally, don't forget, um, you want to see the direction the public is going. The public will be wrong more times than not. So you definitely don't ever want to be on the public side. In this particular case, public's on the South Dakota State. Um, so that's definitely a lean on profits. Anyway, I hope this video helped. If you want access to power rankings for all my lines throughout the entire tournament, you can get that for $49.95 per month. In addition to that, you get access to all of my uh, coaching videos. Uh, really good uh, NBA run here um i don't personally wager nba but we're having a lot of success with the double digit favorites if you follow me on instagram you'll see what i'm talking about um we uh handicap the games where my line has an opponent as a double digit favorite if we have value uh been real consistent with that um on a six and seven i'm sorry won six out of our last seven in soccer so that model is absolutely solid you get the entire model uh, if you're a coaching client, access to how I handicap it, um, what stats I use, everything A to Z. And if you want to join, uh, get all my access to all my plays, that's 99 a month. And if you join for an entire year, you get access to everything on the site. That's the best value, $499. You save about $600 on the year. Hope this video helped, and good luck today, and talk to you guys soon. Peace.